Hello, Bill Terry here. Influenza is one of the world's most common communicable diseases. Every year there are up to 5 million cases resulting in between 300,000 and 500,000 deaths worldwide. Now we know that the disease is very dangerous, particularly for the very young, for the elderly, or for people whose immune system is compromised by uh, a previous disease. And sometimes this disease spreads very quickly among people and can even hop borders and become a pandemic. Uh, the last big pandemic was in 2009, and that's when 500,000 people were killed by the so-called swine flu. I know that the common sense instructions of hand washing and uh, avoiding excessive public contact and building a healthy immune system have all been addressed. But what's been missing is any curiosity about the origins of these periodic diseases. About 60% of all human diseases and 75% of all infectious diseases originate from animals. Most of these infections come from livestock, including pigs and chickens, cattle, goats, sheep. The influenza is believed to originate uh, after humans began their intensive domestication of animals. That's about 10,000 years ago. When the coronavirus reports first became public, I found some of the reporting to be hypocritical. And let me tell you why. We might start with the simple fact that it is confining animals in factories or feedlots so we can fatten them up before we kill them that is a major health issue. Concentrating animal populations into small spaces allows communicable disease to spread very rapidly and to mutate very rapidly. So it makes no difference if the animal is a pig or a human being. The animals we raise to eat are sick by definition. 80% of all antibiotics used in the world are used in animals. They're, they're not used for human beings. The presence of disease in animals raised to be eaten uh, continues to be a, a problem regardless of the breed. Many in the West were horrified by the fact that the source of the present virus uh, was in a wild animal meat market in China. Uh, in fact, it was later discovered that there are about 2,000 of these wild meat farms in China where the animals are raised, much in the same way that uh, chickens and other animals are raised in this country. So the wild kind of goes out of the definition. What difference does it really make between eating a peacock uh, and a turkey or a civet cat uh, or a lamb? They're all sentient beings. The difference is only a cultural one. We decide that animals, certain animals are okay to eat and kill and others aren't. Certainly much of the critique of the Chinese customs was racist and nothing more. If we want to create a healthy world, one of the most important things we can do is to stop eating animals and to, support the, and to stop supporting the industries that provide them. To stop eating animals <laughs> and pretending that killing one species of animal rather than another species of animal is anything other than cultural prejudice. Any of this killing is an ethical, environmental, and health disaster for us all. There's no reason for this habit other than pleasure. Uh, it's not medical, it's not scientific, uh, it's not logical, and we need to just stop it now. If you're interested in learning more about natural ways you can create a healthy immune system, I invite you to visit our website at MacroVegan. Uh, go into the shop and download our free ebook called What to Eat, uh, which will give you a lot of suggestions on eating healthy to, su to support an immune system. Uh, and check out the many blog posts, including, and most importantly, the coronavirus and the immune system, which you'll find under the blog page. Come and join us in the evolution. This is Bill Terra for MacroVegan. Thank you. Be well. Hello, this is Bill Terra. The present development of global pandemic uh, brings uh, several social problems into sharp focus. 
The need for alert and responsive national and global health care systems are, of course, of vital importance. This has to do with the functions of governments and medical institutions, but what about individual responsibilities? What are we supposed to do? Do individuals simply wait until the problems become unmanageable and then be told to wash their hands and stay indoors? Or are there some deeper levels of thought and behavior that could serve our collective health now and in the future? The most current emergency revolves around coronavirus. This is an influenza that we know very little about, really. We have sparse information on it. The rates of severity and mortality compared with other forms of flu are not yet really known. Being vigilant is only common sense. But what I want to talk to you about is another form of infection that's perhaps even a more serious pathology. This is the limited scope of thinking and fear that's passed from person to person regarding the creation and the maintenance of personal health. This is a huge issue. The common use of the word virus is focused on communicable disease and malicious software programs. But I want to suggest that there's another kind of infection, perhaps even more serious than the other two, uh, in the long run. And I'm referring to the spreading of damaging ideas, ideas that in infect our consciousness and, and limit our innate ability to lead healthy lives. So what are these toxic ideas? Well, among all of them that are possible, uh, let's look at just a few. Number one is our lack of respect for nature. We've accepted a false narrative of humanity having dominance of, over all life on the planet Earth. It's a dangerous mental illness transmitted by politics and science and religions and our economic systems. We need to look at our relationship to the planet and respect that it's the source of our being. It's essential that we start acting as if all life matters, not only our own. Number two might be our lack of appreciation for our own human body. We're constructed to be healthy. Our body will always strive to establish health and stay alive. It's our biological priority. But the system only operates effectively if we treat it well. Natural functions of health maintenance and immunity are supported by a variety of influences that are completely under our control. These include good diet, physical activity, a healthy environment, positive outlook. It would be irresponsible to suggest that maintaining health is an ironclad guarantee that we'll never be sick, but it's the only logical and sensible option to take advantage of our full potential. As my wife Marlene says in every class that she teaches, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? Number three is that knowing is not the same as doing. We live in an information age and we all have lots of information, but we're always amazed with clients and students at the, how much they know and how little they do. <laughs> it's foolish to wait until diagnosed with an illness before taking action. We all have a tendency to do that. Uh, what to do from a dietary point of view is very simple and straightforward. It's probably the most simple. Number one is stop eating animal sourced foods, period. Dairy and excessive fat and protein consumption accumulate in tissue and become a breeding ground for disease. Stop eating refined sugars. They deplete natural mineral stores in the body and they undermine immune response. Stop consuming highly processed foods. They're packed with harmful chemicals uh, that disguise the true taste, texture, appearance, and smell of what you're eating. All of these foods exacerbate inflammation and set the stage for bio biological vulnerability. Go to macrovegan.org and download our free ebook, What to Eat. It'll give you a solid information that you need to know to follow a healthy and earth friendly diet. Increase your consumption of grains, beans, and vegetables, particularly dark greens. Eat simple. Incorporate miso soup into your diet on a daily basis. Miso soup especially with mataki mushrooms, have been shown to improve immune response. And it's a tasty addition to any kind of diet. We are not powerless victims here. We have the capacity to change our lives for the better and influence the creation of a healthy society and a healthy planet.
So join Marlene and I in the creation of a healthy world for humans and non-humans alike. Join the evolution. This has been Bill Terra for Macrovegan. Thank you for listening. Be well.